guys. My name is Pete Sekula and I'm the creative director at Quantum Theory Entertainment. Substance Designer is the number one material generation tool out there right now. I use it just about every day to make seamlessly tiling environment textures, but it's also great for character work too. When making materials for characters, you'll often want a basic repeating pattern, but you'll also want to hide that repetitiveness with other details so it looks natural. In this video, I'll show you how I made the simple cloth fabric here, which has some, um, you know, the horizontal vertical weave. It's a basic weave. Uh, we have some fuzz balls kind of in between that are running uh, vertically. And also put some kind of like cat hair all over it. Now, uh, this uses the latest version of Substance Designer, which is 2017.2.1, uh, which has uh, the new scratches generator, which I use to essentially create this simple cat hair pattern. <laughs> it's really just a pure note itself, but um, aside from that, uh, let me show you how this is all done. It's a short graph, nothing really too crazy, too special, so let's just walk through it real quick. First, you kind of start with the shape and with just a rectangular shape. And uh, what you want to do first is create the waving shape of the weave that will eventually use to offset and create. So you're creating just a single strip of yarn or cloth. We're going to bevel that to make it round and then adjust levels so it's a harsher fall off. Still round but pretty much bringing the shadows up to the center and then the uh, mid-tones kind of back towards the middle to kind of create a more rounded fall off. We're going to take that same bevel and rotate it, blur the heck out of it, and invert it. And the point of this is to create the dip in that band, the kind of you want to create the band that goes under the band that's going to go on top, it goes over here. You know, of course, we'll take that and we're going to tile it a whole bunch of times. Here I did 80, right? You could do whatever. Um, now, here in this safe transform grayscale, I offset it by half and did 80 again because when I composite them with the max lighten, this is what you get. You get the single pattern going across and then I offset it by half and up by half so that it's now almost like a a perfect brick pattern but we're doing the wavy cloth pattern. Well, uh, I did an add sub of just a little bit of this you know stringy clothy pattern just to give it a little bit of variation um, and then I finally took that rotated it 90 degrees and offset it by a very specific amount and then you're going to max lighten that back in to actually create the basic weave pattern. Now the key here with this safe transform is to make sure that you're doing an offset relative to the amount of tiling. So uh, back here, you know, we did a tiling of 80 and I need to be able to offset this by up by half and over by half. So it crosses over precisely at the, the lower parts of the, um, the first set of bands. So basically you want to take your tiling number and of course actually this math is wrong. What you need to do is divide the tile number. Actually you divide 0 0.5 by the <laughs> tiling amount. That's what you need to do to get the correct offset value. So in a case of 80 so 0 0.5 divided by 80, it's 0 0.00625. That's the correct offset to get it placed properly. And so you just max lighten both of those together to create the basic weave. Now it's, of course, looking very regular and mathematically perfect. Um, what I like to do is actually take each stitch that runs lengthwise and vertically and give them a luminance variation. So I go over here. And I just take our band, crank up the contrast so it's a pure black and white mask. And I just make the edges kind of dark, just to multiply it a little bit. And then I do a tile generator. And you can see what's going to happen here. Feed that pattern into a tile generator, and we're going to tile it on the Y amount at the precise amount that we did, which is 80. So it's going to give us 80 strips of these patterns and this is just going to represent a broad waviness for each horizontal and vertical strand right 
So I did two tile generators so that um, we have two entirely different variance maps for all the horizontal stripes. And we just composite them with the max lighten. Uh, and this one, of course, just like this safe transform grayscale needs to be offset at the same exact amount. Got to stay consistent. And then down over here is where we start to apply that luminance variation. Okay. Uh, before we do that, though, we need to generate the mask of where that's going to be applied. Because you notice the vertical ones and the horizontal ones are going to be different. We have to mask out where the uh, vertical strands are. And we just do that by taking our horizontal mask. And subtracting the total weave from that, which gives us the difference, which is just the vertical bands, right? Once again, I take our horizontal bands, then I subtract the whole weave from that, and what's left is the vertical bands. Crank up the contrast to get a uh, histogram scan on that one to get the mask and just simply multiply in that variance map on the whole band. So that way we don't even touch the horizontal ones. I'll take that same this band mask I made and just invert it and then multiply the horizontal luminance variation to get the other side. So now we're starting to get something that's like a varied weave. It's looking pretty cool. And now we just do some adjustments here, right? So I take a fur, a real high frequency fur, and I just subtract that in just to give the weave a little bit more of that uh, textured thread patterning. Uh, I adjust my levels down. So, um, you know, we're done with generating the actual height map here. So I'm going to lower it in preparation for adding in my fuzzballs and my cat hair because those are going to be on top. So I need to push the tops of this thread in to make room for everything else. So I bring these highlights down and of course I give the whole weave a bit of a warp with the Perlin noise node. Um, so now we're doing the fuzz, right? And I labored about this for a little while trying to generate the right kind of feel because the fuzz balls are balls but they're very soft and kind of bunched together. So it was a little bit of a pain in the butt to go through but basically it's you just start with a black and white spots one. I probably don't even need that node. Um, black and white spots one, and I just start to manipulate it a little bit. You know, reduce the contrast, blend in some more noise, just to vary it up. Adjust the levels as needed, so I get a little bit less of the fuzz. But I adjust um, the highlights and shadows, so it's a little bit higher contrast, more of a mess. Starting to kind of feel like fuzz or at least look like it. And uh, what I do then is I invert that mask and use that as a blur map in the non-uniform blur grayscale, which should give it a little bit of a beveling. Actually, that's not even doing anything. I have no intensity, so ignore that. Cool. It's one last node to take care of. Um, but I do feed that into a slope blur. Um, I take my original mask, use that as the slope, and I take my hot contrast mask as the grayscale input, set the mode to min, very low intensity, super high sample. And what that does is it kind of turns everything into like a kind of a soft ball with a very gradual soft height, right? So this is the original. It's kind of messy, and this is what we're looking at here. It makes everything look kind of like little balls, little styrofoam pebbles, I guess. And... Uh, Kind of fuzz balls on shirts run vertically along the weave, and that's just a simple matter of uh, taking anisotropic noise. I dropped the resolution so it wouldn't be so sharp, and I warped it with uh, simple Gaussian noise. So there's a little bit of you know aliasing that's happening, and that's on purpose because this map is still 512. I want the edges to kind of blur because I'm going to take that and subtract that anisotropic from my uh, slope blur fuzz map and that gives me the vertical kind of distribution I want and uh, it's a little bit too vertical so I just blur that 
adjust levels and use that as a mask to blend in the original map so that there's a little bit of roundness showing up here so it's not all perfectly ver uh, vertical. So that's the vertical one and there's the max lightened version. And then it's just a simple matter of taking that fuzz map and max lighting it into the uh, weave. Uh, cat hair <laughs> use the uh, new scratches generator that's in uh, substance 2017.2.1 um, it's pretty cool. It's got very organic scrapes. These look like hairs. So all I did was uh, just use whatever settings, manipulate it, made them thicker. Uh, I used a safe transform just to offset them, and I max lined them both in there. And this was just because I wanted more scratches. Instead of having to uh, increase the spline number, I just did it this way because it's, I don't know, it's kind of fast for me. Make sure the height is set up properly and just do a max lighten. And it looks like it's sitting on top of the surface and uh, you know the, the splines fade as they get lower. So they are kind of sticking into the surface and coming out logically. So it, it feels right. It feels like they're actually sitting on the surface. You know, manipulating your height relationships is a really important task <laughs> that you have in Substance Designer. Um, the albedo isn't really anything special. I just created a base albedo just so I could see uh, the details. Really nothing special. The goal of the video was just to show off how the height map was made. And then you just feed that into a normal map. No big deal. And uh, here's your normal. Looks pretty reasonable. And here's the height map. It's pretty reasonable too. I hope you enjoyed this quick lesson. Be sure to subscribe to my channel or mailing list for more tutorials on Substance Painter and Substance Designer.